with by people that, that just imagine you're in a simulation in, a, in, a, in some kind of a dream and they're manipulating the things that happen to you in this dream from another dimension with a machine. And they're inserting things like, yeah, let's have the guy at the gas station say something uh, to someone, you know, to scream the name Zeph. Hey, Zeph! What? That's at a gas station all the way across town. And then you go look at him and he wasn't talking to you. He just, he says, Zeph is here! What? Did I hear that right? He said, no, Jeff is here. Jeff is here. Was it Zeph is here or when I pulled into the gas station or was it Jeff is here? Zeph, you're awesome. What did I do? And the people doing all this, they think that they're at the top of the chain there, food chain. And they're being handled and they're being made to do all this and they don't even know it. But they're, the buttons are being pushed and they, well, they're part of the hive. They have no will of their own anymore. So they, they just have to do what they're programmed to do and that's what they're doing. So they have no freedom. But they delight. And then when you're scared, my God, I think he's talking about me. You know, all the way across town here, I they don't know me here. I, it's like they, they knew I'd be here or something. I just, how could they coordinate that? It's too, are they following me? No, man. You're on the Truman Show, buddy. They're controlling the whole thing from off camera. That's it. Hello? It's not contiguous. It's, 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 it's make-believe here. Yes, it's it, people at random, the van going by, the maids, you know, four of them sitting in a car down the street. When you leave, yeah, they, they surreptitiously go and sneak in, and your neighbor helps them in because he's got a key from before, and uh, so he helps them get in. And then they just kind of mess a couple things up, and then they leave. Yeah, well, sure. And then across town they say, tell me, you look a little stressed. What's going on in your life? Well, I already know. Don't worry. You don't have to say anything. I already know. Well, how do you know? Oh, well, it's you're dealing with another world that knows a lot of things you don't know. And you never get an answer from that person because it would be illegal for them to say anything. Even if they did, it wouldn't make sense because it's multidimensional. They would just say, it's your choice to be miserable. Don't you understand? It's your free will choice to be miserable. And I'm saying, well, I don't, what did I choose that's making me miserable? And then, of course, you'll get no answer. Because the fact of the matter is, you know, most people in that situation have not made a choice. They're in the valley of decision. They haven't chosen, they don't believe there's a, a, a matrix there with the devil running it and that most of their friends are part of. They don't believe that. They don't believe it. They don't believe it. Then they wind up targeted. And then it's the guy at the bank, it's the dentist, it's the... There's nowhere they can go. There's nowhere they can run and nowhere they can hide. It's coordinated. And it doesn't matter what person you run into. They're all part of it. Is it billions? I've flown thousands of miles away only to have the bartender in a hotel somewhere else say we know who you are you know things like that and then act like hello mr bartender what, what did you mean but and then they have a blank look on there they're not even he doesn't know what he just said you know that button was pushed he said what he said those probably aren't even his words but the point is it scared you didn't it it altered your course didn't it it did harm to you, didn't it? It's been a plague to you, hasn't it? It never seems to stop. They kept messing with you and messing with you and messing with you. And your life has been ruined, hasn't it? And you haven't been able to sleep, haven't you? And everything is just wrecked. And nobody you can trust. And all the old friends you had, they're, they're not trustworthy anymore either. There's nowhere to go. It's just terrible. So I think we've exhausted this topic. There is only one solution. And no, uh, as far as Dr. Hall concerned, he said that you're, you're not going to get out of it. You, 
you know, he wanted me to be kind of joining the community because I'm not going to get out of it, he said. You know, once they got you in their system, they just keep as if it's some kind of terrestrial thing. And, you know, that's where we disagree. And, and I don't know where he's at now. He may be completely, you know, evolved on it. I don't know. All I know is what I know. And my result has been uh, great. In other words, I acted on what I know, and then what I know has proven to be true and workable and practical, and that's why I'm laying it on you. Because, you know, I've been set free by the Lord, and no, I never heard any more Navy fight songs or anything else. He said, I'm going to hear those for the rest of my life, and I need, don't I need to, you know, have group support? Apparently, I, uh, and there they have had continuations of all kinds of songs and things in their head and all that. It didn't, uh, not me. Well, now I'll start up again because you're talking about, no, not me. I'm just not going to start up again. I'm fairly confident. Um, I guess what it is is that uh, my faith has gotten stronger. So when I go into town, if they start doing anything, and they do, you know, you see them being coordinated, then they kind of back off because it's like, you know, what happens when you put them back on their heels is they never get over it again. This, this ruins lives. I mean, these people have died. They've committed suicide. They've, they've uh, had car accidents. I mean, that's what happens when a, when a child of God puts them back on their heels. Because they know it's wrong what they're doing. They're looking for an excuse to punish themselves because they feel guilty. Don't you understand that? It's like the criminals always get caught. So when you put them back on their heels, meaning you can see and you, they're busted, uh, their life, they're not, a, they, you know, what happens to them, how the Lord uses us is we tag them. And then once they're tagged, their own people reject them. They might even become TIs themselves at that point. Uh, it's all for the good because, you see, in their misery, they can repent, just like in my misery. I mean, you talk, they put a lot of misery on I me. Mean, well, a lot. I could be really bitter for the rest of my life, but I'm not. And I wasn't even over the last 10 years, even though there was still going on, you know, poisonings and things like that have happened over the last 10 years. But I'm still not bitter, even though these are traumatic things. You know, when people try to kill you or hurt you or, you know, it, 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 it's, it's weird, like in a surreptitious or deceptive or gang stalking manner, then, of course, you know, you could finally just be so paranoid and bitter that, Everything sucks and it's just always going to suck and you might as well just blow your brains out. And if you try to go to a shrink and explain it all, you know, like that'll help you, they'll go, tell me all about it. Boy, you really have issues with betrayal, don't you? Now, that just sounds like crazy talk. Those people weren't waiting there at the gas station for you. You just mistook it. You're just delusional. Here, you need to be on medication. That's what you'll get. Even though they know full well what you're describing is real. That's right. That's how your psychiatrists roll. Great, great job. And that's why they commit suicide more than any other group. Why? Because they feel guilty is why. Guilt, 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 guilt. Psychiatrists have guilt. They have guilt in all this. They've been perpetrators in all this. They got a hand in evil. They're liars. And so they feel guilty about misleading their patients, many of whom are targeted individuals who they end up labeling as mentally ill. And that becomes a social stigma, and they become victims for the rest of their lives. And that's what happened to targeted individuals I've known from the past. They became professional victims, and their lives were ruined. The whole gang stalking event, events, all of it, led to the ruination of the person completely. Well, they lived on as paranoid freaks, I guess. Afraid to go outside, afraid to look around the corner. Then they took medication for being having panic attacks, which were not panic attacks, but based on this horrible situation. And uh, then, you know, I mean, it's just basically, you know, professional victims.
And it's not to say that, you know, the lambs are not sinners. I mean, well, everyone is a sinner. You know, you might even sin less than some of them. But I've seen them coordinated where even like I, I go outside, it's a full moon, and I, I see the neighbors all around, all their lights are on, and they're staring at me. From their, they're sitting there like zombies, still, like almost like silhouettes, looking out the window. Everyone, the whole neighborhood. I lived up on a hill, so you look down the hill, you have all the neighbors there, so you can see all their upper bedroom window. They're all standing in their bedroom windows, staring at me, things like that. Go out there at three in the morning, they're there. Go out there at five in the morning, they're there. Go out there in the afternoon. They're there. How do they get? Do they go to work? The answer is, those aren't. That's not this dimension. The people that actually live there, they're not doing that. They are going to work. They are having their lives. You see, I've it's gotten to. The, I've seen. Yeah. Oh yeah. No, I I would I would put my experience uh, at it, it's so terrifying. It was so terrifying. I've even written about it, and you know, I mean, it's it was terrifying. You know, driving down something like Sunset Boulevard at three in the morning, trying to get away from the Satanist. You know, at, at a, let's say at a party I was at with these kids. You know, we were kids back then, and um, you know, and and they all manifest against me. It's like I was just there, and the next thing you know, they're all turned on on me specifically. You know, and so as I'm driving to get away, and I'm really paranoid. It's really freaked me out. Like, they're all like demons behind those masks. They're not even the friends I had, you know? Whole party of people. Everybody from school. And all the girls and everybody, you know, pointing and laughing at me, suddenly zoning in on me and something. It's saying cryptic words. I, you know, whistling and making noises. So I drive down Sunset to get away. I'm going to drive to the beach, you know? So I'm heading down Sunset. It's three, freaking three in the morning. Now kids go, yeah, well, it's, well, it's about four in the morning now. It's a perfect time to tell you this ghost story. And there's people at the edge of their driveways, out at that hour, in their bathrobes and whatnot, waiting for me to drive by, and then waving and laughing. How do you like that? Do I know something about this? So later I wrote about it and I had to bring a friend in because it freaked me out, the topic. I, I buried it. I didn't ever want to think about it. I would never tell any, any psychologist or shrink about it because, I, you know, I was afraid they'd think I was just completely delusional because it just seemed so insane, you know, but it literally happened. Just stuff like that, you know. Let's multiply that over so many years. And then it would go away, like for months on end. And I'd start believing the world was just a... I was mistaken. I was deluded. I was delusional. I obviously I had a problem, and, and now I'm, I'm doing better. So I would take all the blame, and I'd you know, tell people uh, I'm a professional victim, you know. Before I knew, you know, this was as a teenager and then growing into my adult years. After all the things, you know, and after all the putting Humpty Dumpty together again, and after all the shrinks, and after all the uh, brainwashing and everything, I, I was led to believe that I was just on drugs and I was having hallucinations and it was all delusion and, you know, your parents aren't like that and your, you know, their friends aren't like that and the kids at the school, they're not like that. They're not, you know, taking a mask off and being, you know, all that is crazy talk. It's like schizophrenic, it's like psychotic. Okay, but I'm better now. I've had a lot of group therapy and I, I've had a lot of therapy. I've seen shrinks every single day, so I've, I'm much better now. I don't believe things like that anymore. And then nothing would happen. I can hear a pin drop. Oh, boy, I guess you're riveted to this. Nothing would happen, you know, like for months on end. It's, and then all of a sudden there'd be a glimpse, like some weird kind of thing. Like I'd be going along for months and everything seemed okay. Like, yeah, it must have been me, you know. And then... uh where I got invited to this friend's for dinner and something got triggered in me, something crazy, and I, I couldn't be, I just, I just bolted from there and went and ran and hid in my apartment. And it was just, I never got invited again because I obviously made an uproar. I mean, you know, the same thing with if I was at a party and 
later on, and then I felt that the same thing was happening. They were coordinating around against me, and I'd had some thing to drink, and they were having weed, so I had weed. This was an adult part of way many years later, where I thought, you know, everything was contiguous and normal, and I was abnormal for now about 20 years. And then there was a manifestation at this house. It was like at this doctor's house, and you know, later I find out he and the uh, the missus were having at it on the side. <laughs> Uh, cracks me up, but, uh, no, all, everything cracks me up, all that kind of stuff, but, you know, but, uh, but, but and, and she was such a jerk, because she didn't back me up, you know, when I was, and I suddenly was accusing them all of, you know, of, and then I, then I had to quickly leave, and I left, and I never got invited again, <laughs> but, uh, it was happening, they were doing that. They were they were coordinating it on me. They were focusing it on me. I was like, I'm just here to enjoy the party. And there were a bunch of people, all professionals and wealthy people. You know what I mean? Kind of a kind of a high high end kind of a party thing, you know. And uh, and then after that, I'd see this guy, this doctor. You know, he he, you know, he was all right. You know, he was kind of an asshole. You know, but I mean, he was not doing that. What he was doing then. And what happened there at the park, I could explain it, is the all, they all manifested whatever is in them is being controlled by another source. And so they were starting to be coordinated. In other words, I saw glimpses of something that I got, thought I got over 20 years ago. And then I told my wife at the time, I said, you know, I think I need help. I think I'm kind of slipping back into, uh, you know, being delusional. You know, I, I, I need some help. You know, I, I, maybe I got to go see a shrink, you know, or something. I think that's a good idea, she would say. Something's wrong with you. So she was not nice. <laughs> right? Meanwhile, there's this whole other world that I know nothing about going on all around me. That I was actually a T.I. of in my own house. With my own wife. She was one of them. With all of them. And none of them were actually the people that I had known. I'd see the doctor, and he wasn't the one that was at the party. They're, they're two different people. Now that you could say, is that an interdimensional shift? Or is that people of a demon within the person taking over? Well, I think it's a little of both. I think it's definitely a dimensional shift, meaning the whole set changes. All the people change. It's not just like one changes, they all change. So it can't be just individual demons manifesting. That theory doesn't work in that, in that case. They all change at the same moment, and they all change back at the same moment. And when they change, then they're after me. Yeah, that's it. They change back, then they're not. They appear not to be, but they still have a secret. You know, that you, you're not one of them, they're not one of you, so you still have that. And they all have their secret. They're all on the same team. They all have sex with each other and all that. So when they have a, like a marriage, the marriage was considered fake. My wife was simply assigned to me. It was all one big fake, stupid thing. They think I've forgotten about it all. <laughs> they think that I don't remember, but I do remember exactly what happened. They think it was, you know, and, and you know, something good came from that marriage. I mean, it was like a year, lasted about a year, but I did get a daughter out of the deal. But... Um, you know, it wasn't a marriage. I mean, this was just, just like a, you know, it was like having a, I, I, I don't even know what you would call it. I have no idea. It was, it was basically, I'm the idiot Truman, and they all have another life they live. And they all have boyfriends and girlfriends and other, other life that isn't the one you share in your house with them. And they're there keeping eyes on you keeping control of you, right? Your entire reality is then them. All the parties, all the socializing, all the things you're involved with, all being controlled by them that are being controlled elsewhere. And the weird stuff that happens, the interdimensionality, the set changes, you know, the alien stuff, which is also part of it, that's all going on, but then no one will tell you. They'll say, I think you might need a little refresher. You need some help, maybe some medication, 
It looks like you're slipping again. When all you're doing is seeing what's there. All you're doing is reacting to what's there. All you're doing is saying, ouch, when they hurt you and you're saying, hey, please stop hurting me. You're not supposed to see that, that we're doing that. It's you that's hurting yourself. Don't you remember? Time for your medication. Oh, you're not going to take your medication? Well, tell the doctor. You, right? Right? And then one way or another, you know, we're, we're in your house. We're, and then they have their own secret life. You know, they all go meet. You know, your wife isn't your wife. She goes and has, a, has another boyfriend somewhere else. Right? They all have their lives. Right? Do you understand what I'm telling you? It's very critical that you understand this story exactly. If you've understood it exactly to a T, you just let me know. Email me at metazef at gmail.com. I can't handle hundreds and thousands of emails if that's what it turns out to be, but if you know exactly, I mean to the T, just say yay or nay in our you know, you can, you can explain. Because, see, what I'm saying is this discreditation of people and the psychiatric community and all that that's geared to take... Do you realize how many targeted individuals in the past that you didn't know? Not part of this current batch of professional victims, but people before it was even called that? Do you realize how many people ended up being victims of the psychiatric establishment because they were trying to tell the story of what was happening to them. Do you understand that? How tragic, how awful. They came before you. Then that one, they're trying to bring that back again. So when people have a problem, accepting reality is what they'll call it. In other words, once you see the way the world really is, then you give your consent and you become a team player. And then you will be the stalker. You'll be the gaslighter. You won't be the one it's happening to. There's a whole world you know nothing about. And all the people that come into your world, they pretend to be your wife. They pretend they're all like CIA undercover people, you know. They pretend to be the plumber. They pretend to be the roofer. They pretend to be, you know, the maid the housekeeper, the, uh, you know, whatever, the whatever you do. They pretend to be your best friend from high school or your good friends that you work with in the film industry. They pretend that there's this, like, agreed-on reality that they'll participate in, and as soon as they step off the set, they're back with their bodies again, you see. You're just the one on the movie set. And they think that they run the show and they have this big world that they belong to and they're happy and they're having fun. And uh, then they got to go deal with the, uh, you know, the various movie sets around the, uh, the town. And what they don't realize when they feel so confident, so cocky, so above it all, so far superior to you, you're just uh, pathetic. They don't realize every single one of them is a slave. Every single one of them has no life of their own. Every single one of them is being led to tragedy, and when they get older, they get dropped. And if they told if they ever say anything about this, this conspiracy, this thing, this interdimensional thing, this... This whole thing that deals with, it's all of it. It's, it deals with every conspiracy. If they, I'm not going to mention what the conspiracies are, but take your pick. Anyway, it leads to all that. If they say anything, then their children or grandchildren will be cursed upon and will be, the full wrath of this machine will be on them. So they keep their mouths shut unto death and the secret remains. No, it's not like the game where they have a place to go meet. They don't need to meet. Their meeting place is the globe or whatever. Oh, maybe you think it's flat. The earth, the, the, the world, as it were. 
No, I'm not discouraging any, any of the people pursuing the flat earth, or this earth, or a holographic moon, whatever. I say it's all good. It's all leading to this awakening, so I'm all for all of it. To me, it's, it's always been a movie set, so, you know, when you say, oh, NASA's lying or whatever, it's like, yeah, well, tell me something I don't know. I've been, this has all been a lie from the beginning. You know what I mean? Just everything. <laughs> so, it's not so, so if the, if the stars out there are paper mache, it's like, yeah, well, you know, it wouldn't surprise me. It's, it's, uh, it's just, this, we're in a really tough situation here. And the saddest thing about these people is a lot of them know it's a movie. See, they don't know that they're on the movie set being used as sock puppets and prop. They, they have no life of their own. They have no thought of their own. They're just hive. We're not hive, you and me. We're not hive. We're going with the Lord. Where, where, where we're going to wake up, where we're going to wind up, is a world without them, okay? A world without the intertwining, or without you know, the fall of man in Genesis to the, uh, to, to the devil, basically, which is the intertwining of the DNA. All that's going to be over with. Well, you know, the Buddhists are obsessed with uh, escaping this wheel of, this wheel of 10,000 hells, they call it this wheel of suffering, of being recycled again and again and again, and you can't get out. It's just pure hell and torture. It's because that's what they harvest to live. They need your trauma to live. They employ these people to traumatize you, the targeted individual, so they can live. It's all part of a chain. So why are they doing it? And then I will, I will always tell them to live. Is he rich like me? Has he taken the time to show you what you need to live? <laughs> yes. Fathers throwing their sons into the fire. Great. Great, Dad. Way to go, buddy! <laughs> it's just as uh, sad as can be, but uh, I... Uh, I'm not here to mock them. I, I, I don't want to mock them. I realize that many of them are, you know, friends I've had and, and people that I have hope and that I pray over that they're going to get free. You know, they're going to get free of that. But yes, if that's the team you're on, you're going to, you know, everything we want around you is going to have to be in that because you don't want them targeted and hurt like you, pe people that you have to go hurt yourself. You, you know, you, you don't, you don't want your kids to go through that kind of suffering and become a social pariah and all that. You don't want that. So you, you know, you, you hope it goes light. You just tell them to keep their mouth shut and look the other way on evil and kind of just go along to get along and, you know, it's going to work out all right. And, you know, you make sure that you get that done when they're teenagers. In, in, in more elite families, that gets done when you're five. It starts with sexual um, training by adults. And, you know, eventually uh, those that thrive in that environment become the movers and shakers of the world. I'm sorry. It's that, if you really knew how evil it really all is, you wouldn't even be able to stand it one more day. Because <laughs> it, gets, it gets worse than that. That's just the surface. Anyway, just like the light could be just overpowering, the darkness can also be overpowering. Understand. And so you need a way to get through this darkness. And the only way is the Lord. And if you're a tweener, where you're kind of going in and out, they own your ass. Don't even talk to me about it. They own your ass. You know, you do not have your own life. You know, you think, well, I, I'm married and that really is my wife. We really are on the same team and, you know, these are my friends. I mean, not like that guy over there where it's all kind of the fake Truman Show where we, we, are, we pretend to be his friends and she pretends to be his wife, but she's really my wife. Mm -hmm. But then someone's undercover around you too, buddy. See, the chain is endless. You're completely, totally, 100% horn-swoggled. <laughs> you're, you're strapped. You can't make a move, dude. You believed all that rock music that was a free ride, huh? Yeah, buddy. I know you very well because, you know, you're always trying to mess with our people. So I, I've, I've had to study you over the years and I realize you're just a coward. 
you didn't want trouble. You're just trying to kind of do what your parents did. And you don't want to, you know, you're not here to save the world. You're just trying to, you know, get along. Well, there's a lot of our people out there, too, working in the world, having jobs, having bosses, having to, you know, contend with this stuff. It's very difficult. They're towing the line. Well, how about you? You say you believe in the Lord, yet you're really one of them. You've you got to do more than put your, you got to put some skin in the game, man. You know, you have to actually have a relationship with God and then trust him to get you to work. Trust him to get you through that, uh, the, that, uh, the, the water cooler is issues. Trust him to get you through the cafeteria. Trust him to get you to the, you know, to the, to, to, through the TSA at the airport. Trust the Lord to get you through, you know, a simple shopping experience or whatever. Trust the Lord when you know they're out there waiting for you that could happen at any moment. Trust the Lord and be joyous and be grateful. That's what you want to do. A real overcomer. Joy despite all this. Yes, it's possible. Thriving despite it all. Yes. There was a gal on the radio, on terrestrial radio, talking about, you know, chastising parents for um, selling their kids out. And I couldn't believe that. And then she was off the air. She was never on the air again. She was substituted for somebody. And she, she just flat out said it, just like matter of fact. I was like, I wish I'd remembered what her name was. You know, I mean, I think we all know... Uh, there's a right way and a wrong way. You know, the right way is to teach the kids about the Lord and have them beholden to the Lord when they're going to school, when they're getting their, you know, their bona fides, when they're going into the law firm, when they're going to the business school, when they're going, you know, or whatever it is where you're going to be around a lot of people that are really greedy and very, you know, and compromised in some way. You know, you're going to have, you if you've got a strong um, relationship with the Lord, you know, and all those things, and are earnest in your dealings, you will thrive, you will survive, you will do well. You'll do better than them in the end. I've been trying to tell people this for the longest time. If you want to really be successful, you're going to have to have that relation with the Lord and, 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 and God's Word and, you know, the Proverbs, and there's just all, you've got to have to know all this stuff and lead a good life. Now, all the things that happened to me before, you know, the fake wife, the fake this, the fake that, the fake friends, right? People actually were, you know, hired to be fake uh, patients with me, and, and, you know, they were all actors. Yes, I'm sorry. That, it does happen. But I, you know, lived to tell about it, and I, and I lived to understand it, and I lived to put my, my understanding out there, and I've proven to them absolutely, you know, beyond all doubt. I don't get into all the conspiracies, you know. I just talk about this as a spiritual battle. And then unfortunately, a lot of, like I say, the hive is, is run from that other side. And that other side is very sophisticated and it's, it's an off world. It's not in this world. So you just have to understand that. And, and once you understand that, then you'll be very, very grateful that you're a targeted individual and not one of them. Okay. You're targeted because, you know, you're aware of it, but I mean, there's billions and trillions and billions of people targeted, and it's because that's how they feed. It just basically comes down to that. I know it's sick. <laughs> I know. It's sick. We're kind of like a food source or battery source, whatever you want to say. It's, that's sort of the, the whole idea. Yeah, I mean, you know, the answer at long last will not be fantastical. You know, it won't be, uh, you, you know, it won't be this big giant answer like, oh my God, whoa. It just isn't that. It just comes down to simple, um, you know, exist. Simple, you know, an organism that wants to exist and has to do certain things to exist. And that's basically what you're looking at. So the, the earth becomes a cattle farm, right? And the, the, the cattle that's being ranched are the, uh, the targeted individuals, which they're, you know, potentially a billion or two or three. You know, I mean, there's like half. I mean, it's the weed and the tares grow together. The, uh, the people that are coordinating around all those TIs are, are basically there, you know, aiding and abetting the rancher for the purpose of the slaughter. They don't want to be slaughtered, so they agree to help, you know, round them up and, you know, pretend to be their friend, set up a false reality. It's all, it's all to deliver the goods. 
So why, why do people get targeted? It's not just to torture you. It's what they get off your torture. And then they, who are being ordered to do that, um, you know, get to live another day. I guess that's the, that's they can't survive unless they agree to follow orders. See, so it's just it's just it's the most bizarre thing. It's very magical. It's very occult. It's very it's very multidimensional. It's very awful. But um, in my life, I've had a lot of you know. I mean, I've had a lot of the theatrics. I mean, you know. Mega theatrics, I mean, bizarre, mega, you know, beyond, I mean, just completely supernatural mega theatrics involving terrestrial things. And, uh, you know, it's, uh, and then I've had calm, too. I've had just like, you know, uh, I. it's not like they don't know, you know what I mean? It's like people I interact with now, it's like, I don't care what they know or don't know. You know, it's like, I don't care what they do. If they're working for me, then I, I don't care if they're on some of this side, that side, the other side. I expect them to do the job, you know. Whatever their thoughts are, if they're going to try to target me and they try to triangulate, I won't let them because I just, you know, I'm not interested in them being in my life. I don't have people in my life because so many are compromised and can be used for the wrong thing. I don't, I don't you know, they're there to do a job. They get paid for that job. They're told to go home. That's it. Okay? There's no need going further than that with people. The reason it's like that, I don't even try. And the reason why is because people are weak and they can be used. And if you're targeted, then they can be used against you. Even people that you are friendly with, they're nice people. They're still not strong and they might be used if they're compromised at all, you know, they, they, you know, to, to betray you. So, you know, I, I don't, I try to keep things professional. There's always a risk that things like that can happen. I try to keep things professional. Maybe sometimes they, they, there, there are problems and betrayals and things. And that, for that, I can't chase all that down. I have to trust the Lord. But I'm sure there's been all kinds of shenanigans, but the Lord keeps it in check. But He doesn't say you're going to be free of it completely. No, you never will be. On that, Dr. John Hall was correct. We never are free of it completely. He said that to me, you know, a few years prior to my getting really attacked. So he was right. It's just that I'm not pay, I'm not going to those meetings because I don't feel that they talking about a, 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 you have a supernatural reality in natural, you know, kind of um, 3D terms, linear terms, does not help me since I understand so much more about this than just somebody, you know, aiming a beam thing at you, which happens on, you know, it happens. I've reported when it's happened, and other people have chimed in and said, I got it too. Yeah, okay, you know, you know that's still going on, and, but it's not, it's, it's not like it was, though. I trust that God's going to deliver me because I belong, that's the only place I, I trust that he's going to be true to his word and I have nothing to worry about. I trust the Psalms. I trust the word today. I trust that he will deliver us. I can't worry about every Tom, Dick, and Harry, and you know, and, and Alice and Jane, um, you know, trying to come into my life with whatever they're doing. I can't. There's nothing I can do about that. You know what I mean? If people have these weird ideas of that they will um, gain by, you know, I, I don't know. I, I I can't go there. I can't distrust like that. Tom, Dick, Harry, Jane, Alice, and whatnot. You know, are welcome until until I, if, unless I see something that's untoward, and at that point, then they're not welcome. It's that simple. But I'm not desperate to be personally tied up with a lot of people. I don't really have time. I'm trying to. What gives me the most pleasure is just being able to to love the Lord through His creation. And it's very beautiful in the desert here, and it's just lovely. Uh, I I get very bummed out when I see you know uh, this this Pope thing and the you know. The, the um, calling, you know, when you know what they're up to, right? And then you see people going along with it. I, I, I just have to put my faith in the Lord and prayer. Since it is so malleable, and this is my last word to you and then I'm gone. Since it is so malleable, okay? Prayer, one man, one prayer can change the whole world the next day. It's interdimensional. Prayer can change, move mountains, change things. 
change the reality. Just pray right now. In Jesus' name, I pray right now for the protection of all the lambs, for the protection of all the innocent, for the protection of the ones walking through this world right now, Lord. They're all being targeted and used and, and abused. Lord, I pray for all that to stop and for them to have good lives. Good, productive lives where yes is yes and no is no, Lord, the way that you want us to live. Please, Lord, like it said in the word that you gave us today, gather your people, defeat Babylon. And Lord, we've been scattered and wounded. Heal us all, Lord, in Jesus' name, and keep us walking in your protection in Jesus' name. Amen. That's all I can say. It's the most messed up thing in the world when you have people appointed to you um, to be your friends, to be people that work with you and all that. And it's uh, who, who then work for the hive and then it's, it's you know, you're, you're, you're being targeted to be a victim of some sort. It's a terrible um, thing to have to, to comprehend. And it causes people to question their lives and usually they get shunted off into psychiatrist and you know what I mean and then further handle and control that way I'm you know if, if they bleed through and see a little reality if they if the mind control breaks just slightly <laughs> you know what I mean there's all kinds of people waiting to put them under control you know Obama's a, a completely mind controlled you know what I mean he doesn't have any of his own thoughts or anything he may be very intelligent and all that and very talented at what he does uh, no one's saying he isn't but just that you can tell that, you know, you can tell. I can tell with people. Well, the people he deals with are too. So he must feel a common friendship or bond or kinship. But it's, it's you know, him and, you know, McConnell and the, the, the Republicans and the Democrat, all people that are part of this elite group that are um, have been working, like he said, for decades for this new world order. They're on both sides of the aisle, and they're right now. Though you see, there's there's a there's a fight on. I'm, I'm very happy to see it, and it will be successful. Uh, this this thing that's represented by John Wayne or Donald Trump or whatever is also the thing that's going to put ISIS out of existence, and it's going to put any of Obama's policies out of existence. And you know, those policies they'll go back decades and decades, and many, 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 you know years they've been vying for this new world order which is a left wing thing and most of the big perpetrators of it pose as conservatives because that's how they can fool you right like when bush he said he was a conservative and then before you know it you got shackled with the patriot act homeland security you know the gestapo you got all of it with, with bush <laughs> and he he was like a republican conservative can you believe it i mean no but this is you know Pure evil. Did Obama, who criticized Bush, totally, uh, get rid of Homeland Security and all the rest of it? Did he get rid of, did he get the taxes? Lower? Did, did anybody, did, is there any relief anywhere? No. The reason for the taxes and everything that's happening to the people are because, number one, the people um, have proven to be weak, proven to be stupid. Many of them go on to get along with the devil, so that, but nod, nod, wink, wink, they'll never tell the secret because they're all afraid. So basically, they're going to get their ass kicked right now. Uh, this whole country is going to get its asses kicked. And I hope, uh, because they're not going to go easily into that. They're not going to go, oh, you're right, uh, you people that want, you know, you know, a country and you want to, you know, the, the confiscatory taxes uh, that began, you know, later, it was no part of this, founding this country. The purpose of it is to confiscate wealth so that individuals don't get wealthy. Um, once you understand that, then you understand why the elites are not taxed, okay? It's to prevent wealth creation and to confiscate property that people potentially could have. So it's to have a mortgage on your house, mortgage on your life, mortgage on your soul. Uh, you know, make sure you can't ever get a 401k that's going. Make sure that whatever money excess you have is confiscated. And they'll always say it's to feed the poor. You know what I mean? And the stupid people in this country, which has got the lowest IQ of any country in the, in the universe, which is why it's being conquered, uh, just go, yeah, we need to feed the poor. They don't feed anybody. <laughs> they feed their coffers. That's all they do. They confiscate the money from you, and they put it in their banks and in their you know, trust funds, and in their, you know, it becomes theirs. That's all. 
Okay, I think we've hit it. I'm not going to go into politics. You've got enough people talking politics. I know everything about politics, though, in terms of all the motives, all the ins, all the outs, everything, but it's not my job. You know what I mean? There's plenty. Paul Craig Roberts is the guy you got to listen to. He knows, he knows Washington better than anybody. He writes brilliant articles. You read his, and he does a much better job than I could ever do. So, um, but uh, spiritual war, gang stalking, this issue, this is, this is the source right here. And what you can come away with is a great faith in the Lord will quell the whole thing. And we will. We've been two hours and 34 minutes. That's, as, that's the best I could do. I don't think you're going to get a better broadcast on gang stalking. I, you have to be patient, but I, I think we, I, well, there's going to have to be some follow-up, yeah. But I've given you the best, to my knowledge, of what it is and why they're so frightened of you figuring out, which is why they bring their, their armies of psychiatrists at you to try to keep the agreed-upon reality in place. Because what I'm talking about pulls at the very set of the Truman Show and starts, you know, taking down the lights, you know, banging at the back, at the back sets, at the back painted sets, you know, tearing down the props that are storefronts, you know, destroying, you know, the getting into the central casting office and calling them all on it, and it just starts tearing it all up. The whole thing is fake. So rejoice. Rejoice that you know that. Now you just give it all to the Lord and you know, he wants you to be happy. I mean, I, I'm so happy that when I'm screaming, I would like a little more sleep. I'm so happy when I'm screaming, when I'm making music, when I'm singing. I sing about all this too, you know. And I'm involved with, you know, musicians who write about all this and they sing about it too. So, you know, somehow you will eventually realize there's a whole other world that our world, welcome. Stop living in their world, live in our world. Rather, live in your world, my friend. We're in your world, but you're not yet. See, we're in your world, and we're having you know, joy despite the circumstances. You know, and I don't mind the sufferings. I suffer for Jesus Christ when I suffer. I don't like things, I've, I do suffer. People know me, know I do suffer, but I also laugh, and I know that I, who am I to question it? You know, it's real. There's a solid wall. I got to live here. I pay my taxes. I got to go to the thing. I get well. I get sick. I get this. I get that. I got to deal. I got to be here. You know, not sitting on the side of the road, laughing, um, and not participating. And Paul the Apostle is very strong on that too. It's really, really important that we take part in what God has given us to take part in and do the best we can. But knowing what it really is at the end of the day helps increase my faith in what? The Lord. And as my faith increases there, it decreases in the reality of the world. I would even say that the Lord is the one who showed me the truth about what this really is. It really comes from God, because there's no way I could have figured it out on my own. Amen? You couldn't either. You know it. That's why they're so freaked out at Jesus. They don't want people waking up. This has been a nice little farm for them, using all of, all of us as battery sources, as a food source. You like being eaten every day? I don't. Well, the Lord is now announcing that he's going to set it right. So, you know, get your helmets on.